numbers. Numbers are the solution to all of your problems. Okay, first things first, let's get a couple things out of the way because I know that there's going to be comments that uh, after I explain this, somebody's gonna be like, you can't you can't just do that because you gotta know how to do all this other stuff first. Like, yeah, yeah, you gotta, this isn't gonna be a, a, an overnight fix. This is how to think about the concept in order to make it easier on yourself. But there's other things that you gotta have in place first. I mean, let's start with the basics, like play your scales, learn your scales. Why, why do we play scales? Well, because if you want to be able to play in any key, your hands have to be familiar with the shape of each of those keys. You know, whether you're playing just in C or E, each of those keys has a, a, a shape that your hands need to be, you know, familiar with before you can easily navigate the different keys. So I guess if we were to stop at just being able to play in the key, play your scales. But this is more aimed at, okay, if you've been playing your scales and you're pretty comfortable playing scales in different keys, how then can you translate that to chords and ultimately playing the songs that you wanna play but being able to play them in whatever key? That's what this video is about. Also, I wanna point out before I start that this is in no way like the definitive, here's how you do it. This is the, the generally accepted way in music theory class that they are going to teach you. Like, I don't really know. I just know that this is how I've always thought about it. So this is what works for me. So my apologies if there's some other thing that you can do or should do that's, I don't know, more along the lines of like a music theory curriculum. So we think of numbers a lot in music. Obviously when we're talking about like basic triads, we know that they're built with one, three, and five. And then logically, if you think about it long enough, you might figure out that that's because we're talking about scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five and then you can continue six, seven, and that'll bring you back to one. An important distinction here is that what I'm gonna show you, we can pretty much talk about between one and seven, because after that, we're talking about repeated notes. Now, that's different from chords, because with chords, if you wanna add color tones beyond the octave, we call that upper extensions. And that's when you start talking about your ninths, your elevenths, your thirteenths, your sharp fifteenths. But for our purposes, we're gonna consider that chord spelling to be a different sort of approach than what we're talking about, which is just scale degrees. And once we get to seven, we're repeating again. So we'll keep it relegated to like one octave, just for simplicity's sake. So if we take a look at that scale and we have one through seven, that's gonna to correspond to chords too, right? Because we have, if we start each chord, we're gonna call this the one chord. We're gonna call this the two chord three, four, five, six, seven, and that brings us back to one. So the first thing you'll notice is that those chords, when we just use the, the naturally occurring scale tones, some of those chords are major, some are minor, right? We have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor and this one is the only outlier it's like diminished kind of so if we're in the key of c and i say well play a one chord to a four chord to a three chord the default is going to be one which will be major four which will be major and then three which will be minor now that can always change if it's specifically indicated that it's different but in general the naturally occurring state of those chords is pretty much gonna be that. You can already kind of see what's going on here. The key here is that I don't wanna think C major, F major, E minor, A minor, G major. I don't wanna think about that. That's too specific. I wanna think one, four, three, six, five, whatever, right? Why do I wanna think one, four, three, six, five? Because say I all of a sudden want to play an E flat. Well, one, four, three, six, five it's it's gonna be the exact same thing the key with numbers the reason why we want to think in numbers is because numbers are universal because no matter what key you're in it's still one two three four five 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 it doesn't matter whatever key we're considering to be the home base in the particular context whether it's an entire song or part of a song maybe a, a small part of a song is in like a different key for a minute but whatever key at any given time that we're considering to be the home base 
all of our numbers are going to reference the scale tones of that key. So if we're in E flat, E flat is going to be one, F is going to be two, G is going to be three, A flat is going to be four, B flat is going to be five, and so on and so forth. Now that does not change if we go to A. A is one, B is two, C sharp is three, D is four, E is five, and so on and so forth. So this idea of using numbers makes it so that every key all of a sudden becomes identical in every way other than the actual physical shape of it. And again, that's where scales come in. You gotta play your scales. There's like no, there's no way around it. It sucks. Nobody wants to do it, but we have to do it. But the idea is that thinking in numbers makes every single key identical in every way other than physical shape. From there, everything that we make alteration wise is the same as well. One, two, three, sharp four. Sure. Why not? Five. One, two, three, sharp four. Yeah, you bet. Five. But the best part about it is that I don't have to think B flat C D E flat F and then when I switch keys now I have to think G A B C D and then when I switch keys again I have to think E flat F G B B flat A flat B flat everything's just one two three four five this makes life so much easier because the only thing you need to know about any song you want to play is what is the form in numbers does it go one four three six two five one all right, well, let's do that then. In very basic chord structure, we'd have one, four, three, six, two, five, one. Now, if I were to actually elaborate that and make the chords more colorful and more melodic, that right there could look like this. One, four, three, six, two, five, one. So that's all in reference to the C major scale, because that chord sequence happened to be in C major. But if we change key, say now we have a two, five, leading to the four. So let's start, all right, let's take that apart for a second. I just played one, four, three, six, two, five, one. And now I wanna play a two, five to the four. This sounds like a bunch of numbers, sounds like a bunch of gibberish, but check it out, two, five, to the four, leading to the four. What's the four? Well, we have one, two, three, four. All right, so F. So I guess we're changing key and we're gonna go to F, but we wanna do a two, five in front of F. So now we're thinking in a new key, just for a minute. We're thinking in a new key. F, let's take F. One, two, okay, so there's two, it's G. Three, four, five, so there's five, it happens to be C. So for this brief moment, we're thinking in our brains, we're gonna switch keys and we're gonna play a two five leading to the four. So that's gonna sound like this. Pretty normal, familiar sound. But if we add it into the original thing that we played in C, we'll find that, hey, that sound is not, uh, it's, that, that's not unfamiliar, the whole thing strung together. Check this out. That's used in so many tunes over the years. But what happens if we play in a completely different key? Let's go to something wacky like, I don't know, G flat. Let's play this in G flat. One, four, three, six, two, five, one. Two, five, to the four. Same thing, but but now I don't have to think of each different instance of that chord sequence in its specific terms. I don't have to think C, F, E, A, D, G, C, and then G, C to F. I don't have to think about that because if I do, now when I go to G flat, I gotta think of a totally different set of, of names. I gotta go G flat, B, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. And as everybody knows, musicians are lazy and we don't wanna to have to think about more things than we absolutely have to. So instead of having to remember all those different names, why don't we just think of it in numbers and we'll call it the same thing no matter what key we're in. This is the secret to playing in any key. If you start thinking about everything in terms of numbers and not the names, now you can refer to the same numbers no matter what key you're in. And by thinking about the numbers, it helps you to visualize the scale. So if I think, uh, say I'm in A major and I want to say one, five, seven. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and I can do the exact same thing in D flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, this is a concept that a lot of you are probably already familiar with. But if you're one of those people, here's something that you can try to really practice this. Take a tune that you know how to play or that you like to play and play it in all 12 keys. Might take you a while, it might be difficult at first, but the results are definitely worth it. And over time, you'll uh, slowly but surely develop the ability to think about uh, whatever it is that you want to play and, and be able to at least think through it, you know, in, in every different key. And uh, with enough practice, pretty soon you can just do it in real time. But yeah, you have to play scales. And and uh, yeah, they suck, but whatever, do it anyways. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you uh, felt like you got something out of it, hit that like button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already and you would like to do so, please do. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if there's other things that you'd like me to touch on or explain or any musical questions that you have. And yeah, thanks for watching.